Yeah, yeah, okay, makes sense. Um, okay, so moving on to the next question. This um, this is how does threat modeling relate to other security related activities? Uh, so, for example, um, when we we're coming up with the questions, uh, we we're thinking also about, for example, the SAM framework, where it's basically an idea of how how you have different areas of your company and how you you can improve the cybersecurity in all these in all these different areas. So, how, for example, can privacy threat modeling help do this? Um, in, yeah, maybe uh, Ram can start in this question. Yeah, uh, you mentioned SAM, so I, I will piggyback on that. Um, well, SAM is a um, maturity framework, security maturity uh, framework and security assurance program uh, that um, that allows any organization to, first of all, measure where they are in terms of security posture and then formulate a strategy uh, that consists of small improvements over time and then demonstrate and uh, demonstrate that growth and that those improvements. And SAM covers all areas in the software development lifecycle, including design, where threat modeling largely is situated. So, threat modeling, I would say, threat modeling covers a lot of uh, a lot of possible security issues or improvements or activities in that design phase. But from SAM perspective, there are about 90 activities, security-related activities in an application security program during the development of an application, of a software application. Uh, and threat modeling covers, in its most advanced version, probably uh, 10 out of the, those 90 activities. So it's, it's a great start, but it's still about 10% of what you should be doing if you want to be a security champion. Of course, you don't have to be doing all those 90 activities because you need to start from something I mentioned earlier. What is your risk appetite and what is your risk profile and what is what is risk? How important uh, are uh, security issues throughout your, given your organization and your software system? Um, but I would say that threat modeling should come back in most of organizations and most software developments. And I, I think it really makes a difference between a, a pro in terms of, of uh, software firm and team versus amateurs and wannabes. Uh, unfortunately, uh, according to BSIM benchmark, uh, which is BSIM is, is a, an alternative assurance program to SAM. Um, according to their study, only 16 out of 132 firms out there are doing some form of threat modeling, not the most advanced, but some form. And I've also spoken with some practitioners uh, uh, which is highly not statistical data, but they also agree that 1% to 10% of, of software firms and teams are doing threat modeling out there. Um, that's, not, that's not great. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, I, I, I just like to add on to this. Um, you mentioned it's like one of the, I forgot already, how many activities within the, the, the some framework and the development life cycle so indeed it's situated early in in that design phase but it's it's just important to highlight highlight once again that it should not just be seen as that one activity in an isolated box the goal is not to just write a document and say look we spent two hours or five hours or whatever and this is like the the 10 most important threats we came up with the the usefulness of threat modeling is then using that information and using that as input for the subsequent uh, phases to really use that and and make the system better, more secure, more privacy aware. And um, it's even I think there's one uh, one of the the NIST uh, recommendations on I forgot which one, but it it mentions to have threat modeling also used as input for the the final testing because when you know what you want to avoid and you should also once it's already implemented see whether the system actually fulfills that that requirement so yes it's probably just one of those activities but it has an impact on on other activities as well or it should at least yeah actually i, I wanted to add to that that indeed threat modeling should is not something you do and you give it as a paper to to the management but the outcome of threat modeling should be a list of threats and then 
based on those on that list, you should definitely document that list in some tracking uh, system or or uh, or an issue track an issue tracking system, for instance. And then you should prioritize some of those threads and keep others maybe in a backlog. Eventually, like also Kim said, you should be also you can do more things with those threads. First of all, you can solve them, but you can also design security regression tests, which will then check if that thread is uh, correctly solved and if it's maybe regressing. Uh, whether that's automatable or not, that doesn't matter much. You can also have a QA who will have to look at it every time the system, uh, a new release is, is being added. Hey!